morning, everyone. Shalom. And welcome to class. Welcome to all our in-person students, our online students, and our e-learning students who will be listening to this uh, lecture later on. Um, so today we'll continue studying chapter three. We began studying chapter three, the church and the kingdom. We began studying this um, last week. We just did the introduction and we'll continue with our uh, study. So before we look at and study chapter three, uh, let's pause for a word of prayer. So can one of you lead us in prayer, please? Lord, we thank you for one more another day, Lord, as we are here to study. Open our heart and mind, Lord. So whatever we are about to get, Lord, today, we'll keep it within us, Lord. And the leading with the Holy Spirit, we ask you as a teacher here, Lord, to teach us, guide us, give us your understanding and your wisdom knowledge, Lord. We submit everyone and we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, um, Nelson. So um, chapter three, we looked at um, God has redeemed us with the blood of his, with the blood of the lamb. Okay. So, and uh, he has taken back the authority that was given to Satan. Which authority was given to Satan? Who gave the authority to Satan? Man, yes. So um, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, we looked at how God created man in his own image and then he gave them the dominion to rule over the earth. But when uh, Adam and Eve sinned, they gave over that dominion to Satan. Okay, But when Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed us by his blood. Okay, And he has give, taken back the keys of? authority okay and he's given the keys of the kingdom to whom to the church yes so the church um, who has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb has been vested with authority okay they have been given the kingdom authority to overthrow what the devil is doing okay and to usher into earth what is in heaven right we uh, studied Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 to uh, 19. Uh, that is on page number 25. Uh, we looked at that verse. We um, studied that verse in uh, detail. Okay. So we see that uh, the keys of, of the kingdom, which keys sim symbolizes what? Authority. Yes, the keys of authority of uh, the kingdom or the authority of the kingdom of God has been given to the church and we have been given the authority to do what what have you been given the authority according to Matthew chapter 16 verses 18 and 19 yes to bind on earth what is bound in heaven and to release on earth what is released in heaven. Yes. Thank you, uh, Lucy and Daniel. So um, let's go back again to uh, Genesis, to the garden. Again, Genesis chapter um, uh, 1, verses 26 to 28. We see that God says, let us make man in our image. Okay. So man is a unique creation of God. Okay, he created them both male and female. Their body was made from the dust of the earth, but his spirit was created by God. Okay, so a spirit is created by God. So what does it mean? Our bodies are created by the dust of the earth, but our spirit is created by God means what? Spirit is from heaven, okay? which means Adam is an offspring of God, right? Adam is an offspring of God. His origin is from God, okay? So that is very important for us to keep in mind, right? Our spirit is, uh, is created by God, and that means we are children of God. We are the offspring of God. And so if we are offspring of God, that means we have to live according to 
the kingdom culture, the kingdom lifestyle, the kingdom thinking, the kingdom perspectives, the kingdom mindset should become our kingdom. We're not talking about the kingdom of the world, but we're talking about the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God, everything about the kingdom of God, the lifestyle, the mindsets, the thinking, the attitude, the culture, the moral values, everything should uh, align itself to the kingdom of God. God because we are created by God in our spirit man which means we are an offspring of God and also means that we have our origin from God okay now what is so amazing is this that imagine this king okay we studied in chapter 2 that God is okay what did we study in chapter 2 God is whom king he's a king of the king his kingdom right so imagine this god who is this omnipotent ruler of the universe okay who he created adam and eve and he tells them or he issues a decree okay what is the decree he gives them what is the, uh, the decree he issues to them look at genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 what is the issue that he decrees to them Subdue and have dominion. Yes, God says, let them have dominion. Okay. So who is this who is decreeing Adam and Eve to have dominion? It is this God who is the king of his kingdom, who is the omnipotent ruler. He is issuing a decree and he is telling Adam and Eve have dominion on the earth, which means it's not a small thing, right? It's not a small thing. The king is basically transferring or he's delegating his rule, his lordship, his authority, his dominion to mankind. He's the king of his kingdom and he is decreeing or he is delegating the rule, the lordship, the authority, the dominion uh, to mankind. And God is speaking into your life and into my life. And he's telling us, have dominion you were designed for what for dominion you're designed to rule you're designed for lordship you're designed to reign you're designed for authority amen it's a powerful truth right so we are designed for dominion and where are we designed to have dominion on the earth yes it's and God is telling that when He has given us the dominion on the earth, whatever transpires on the planet Earth, okay, it is under our jurisdiction. Whatever happens on planet Earth is under our jurisdiction. Why? Is under our authority. Why? Because He has given us the dominion. Okay, the earth, the heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth He's given to mankind so you have been given authority okay so man's authority is really spiritual in that sense why is it spiritual why is man's authority spiritual why is it spiritual why is it not carnal why is it not earthly why is it spiritual because we are origin is from god and god is a spirit Yes, our origin is from God. He created us and God is spirit. Why else is our authority spiritual? Okay. Our, our authority is spiritual because it comes from God, right? Because it is he who has given it to us and God is spirit, like you said, right? So God is extending his rule, his reign, his kingdom, his government through man and woman on the earth. Aren't you excited that God is, you know, uh, created you to have dominion? That means you should not be afraid of your enemy. You have authority over him. You rule and reign on the earth. And whatever transpires on the earth, you cannot blame God for it. We have to take responsibility. We have the authority and we need to speak against it. So if you see anything in your culture, if you see anything that's happening in your place, in your place of work, in your family, in your neighborhood, if you see anything in your city, in your nation, 
in the church, God has given you the authority. And what do you do when you see things that are not right, that are wrong, that is not according to the kingdom values? What do you do? You pray. When you pray, what do you do? You bind them. Yes, thank you. You bind them. You bind them, right? So prayer is not saying, God, please do this for us. God is saying, Are, I've already given you authority. Use your authority. So how do we use our authority? And bind to bind and to lose, okay? You have to decree. That means you are, you're a, you're the, you are, God has given you dominion, dominion on the earth. That means you are ruling, you're reigning. So you can't just, you know, say, God, if it's your will, please do this in my city, in my state, in my family. You decree. You decree what God has already said in his word, what he's already established in his kingdom. Okay. So in our country, we're seeing a lot of um, uh, incest and uh, rape. So what do we do? We don't say how sad, right? And we don't blame the judicial system. We don't blame the police. But what do we do as uh, as people uh, belonging to the kingdom of God? We issue decrees. What do we issue decrees against? The power, uh, the power of evil, or we break every spirit of pornography, every spirit of sexual immorality, every spirit of perversion, every spirit of adultery. We we break all of those things, and that is what you need to do. So God is saying. Hey, there is things, these things happening in your city, in your nation. What are you doing? Now, we are all grumbling about the traffic uh, O's in, um, in Bangalore City, right? Or the roads are not proper. What do we do? Yeah, you decree. You decree that the government officials will be, you know, um, uh, uh, would uh, do their work. They would uh, they'll, they'll find favor with God. The wisdom of God will flow upon them. There will be good infrastructure. You, you need to decree those things. When you see things in your family, you don't feel sad and you just don't cry and you just don't wait for God to move. God is saying, I've given you the authority. That is your kingdom, right? Your family is your kingdom. Your work sphere uh, uh, is your kingdom. Your locality is your kingdom. Your community is your kingdom. Your extended family is the kingdom that God has given to you. So you need to take authority and you speak and you decree what God has already spoken in his word. Amen. Okay. So we need to do that because, you know, God is extending his rule, his reign, his kingdom, his government through mankind, through men and women. And we are here to uh, release the government of God here on the Earth, okay, so we know that we studied last week, right? Uh, uh, last week, right? Um, what is the who is the king of the kingdom? What are his names? The king of the kingdom. What are the names of the king that we studied last time from Isaiah chapter six? Wonderful counselor, mighty name, everlasting yeah. father, prince of peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we studied each one of them, right? He is. Uh, He's wonderful. That means he wants the miraculous to be part of his kingdom. You know, uh, the, not part of his kingdom, miraculous to be saturated in the kingdom. He is a counselor. That means he wants his wisdom, his counsel to extend in his kingdom. So you say, God, I want uh, your wisdom, your, uh, uh, you know, counsel to extend here on Bangalore City. So the government will know how to, you know, build a better infrastructure, how to handle the traffic O's, how to handle the, uh, the, the problems on the road. Okay, so that is what you need to speak. And he's a prince of peace. There's no peace. You speak God's Peace. He's a mighty God. He is omnipotent. You can say, God, you are the king of this kingdom. Extending your kingdom here in your kingdom, there is no uh, incest. There is no rape. There is no murder, God. And we declare that we bind all of the spirit of suicide, rape, and um, adultery, and murder. We bind all of that. We release, God, what is there in heaven. So that is how you need to pray. And why is it important for you to know who you are in the kingdom of God? So that you can pray like this. You know you have the authority. You're not saying, please, God, please, God. No, please work. We're crying out to you. God is saying, don't cry. Please decree, declare. You know, you're an authority I've given you. It's in your hands. 
And when we declare and decree things, what will God do? Yeah, his power will move. You will see his power moving, whether it's in your personal life, in your family, you, you will see that, okay? So um, God wants all of himself to be expressed here on earth. God wants his fullness to be expressed here on earth. And I think sometimes, not sometimes, I think we, we are very selfish as believers, right? We know the truth. We just don't want to sometimes believe the truth, live the truth. We don't want to exercise our authority. And, uh, you know, uh, we see people struggling and suffering and we say, so sad. We'll just pray for them. But God is saying, hey, I've given you the earth. I've given you dominion on the earth. You can speak things. You can call things to come into uh, fruition, into plan and purpose, because that is what God desires. You know, he created the earth because he wants the earth to be full of his manifestation of who he is, to represent who he is here on earth. His kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not in our home. Not in our in in the Christian home as it is in heaven. It is on earth as it is in heaven. So every dark places, every demonic forces, everything can we can move, uh, you know, mightily, and we can change situations in our city, in our nation, in our workplaces. The work culture that is very sad work culture, uh, full of immorality in the work culture, and we are all cribbing and murmuring and grumbling and you know, gossiping, but we need to speak against those things. We need to issue decrees and declare what God has asked us to, to bring about God's kingdom, morals and values into every sphere of our society. And God has given you and me that authority and we have to use it. And you know, when he's given us the authority, he will hold us accountable, right? He will say, hey, in your locality, there were so many people who are lost. What did you do? You could have decreed salvation. You could have decreed uh, healing, restoration, wholeness. God has a redemptive heart. He's a redemptive God. See, so the, even as we're studying this kingdom of God, I want you all to look into the more important theological truths, you know, and let those truths you know, set you free. And I want you to um, act like kingdom citizens. I want all of us to act like kingdom citizens. Just let it not be a lecture that you're attending and you have to write an assessment, you know, a couple of assessments, so you do it, so you pass it. But I think this is so foundational for our faith and such powerful truths that we uh, see and we are learning here, okay? So um, in putting that dominion on the earth, God was saying, my kingdom will be extended on the earth through whom? Through mankind, through us, through the church. So we have a great responsibility. All that I am, God is saying, I want it to be released through the church, through my people, through the saints, so that the kingdom of the earth will be a true representation of God himself. Amen? Amen? Yes. So God is looking for the kingdom of earth to be like the kingdom of heaven. And he's going to hold us accountable, right? He's looking up to us. So he, he wants the kingdom of the earth to be a true representation of who he is himself. So everything of who God is one has to be represented in every city. So I think many of us represent various cities in our nation. Some of you are representing nations here as well. So God is looking up to us. So we can speak, right? We can decree. We can issue decrees and commands. And God is faithful and he will do it okay so adam and eve's authority came from the invisible to the visible realm it came from the spiritual to the natural realm okay because god is spirit it came from the spiritual realm to the natural realm okay so um anytime we attempt to do things on our own selves we fail or we will fail, or we may fail. Why? Anytime we do try to do things in our own strength, we will fail. Why? Yeah, depending on the flesh, okay? It's not in accordance to his will, okay? Why? Selfish motives, okay? Because where does authority come from? Our authority does not come from our 
ourselves. Our authority comes from God. Okay. And yes, our authority comes from heaven. Okay. So the key to flowing in the authority, the key to seeing whatever you are decreeing and you're commanding to come into fruition, to come into God's plan and purpose, the key is to walk in obedience. Okay. So if you're able to flow in the authority and the dominion that God has vested upon our lives, you know, the key is that you need to walk in. You need to walk in what? In obedience. Yes, we need to walk in obedience. Okay, because our authority comes from God. Our authority is coming from the spiritual realm to the natural realm. And what really connects us to the spiritual realm because our authority is coming from there is our obedience to God. Are you able to understand? Okay. So authority is coming from the spiritual to the natural realm. So what really connects us to the natural realm or to the spiritual realm, sorry? What connects us to the spiritual realm? Our obedience to God. Our obedience to God is what connects us to the spiritual realm because from that, from there comes our authority. Okay. So that is what the Bible says. Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil. Okay. When will you be able to resist the devil? When you submit to God. What is submission? Surrender, obedience. Okay. So, um, so when Adam and Eve, what happened when they disobeyed? What happened when Adam and Eve disobeyed? They lost their authority. They lost their, the place the, and also their connection to where their authority comes from, from the spiritual realm. Okay. So when Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, he redeemed us. He brought back that authority and he's giving us the keys of the kingdom He's giving us the authority of heaven. Now, the authority is vested in the redeemed saints of God. Now, when I look at demonic spirits, okay, I'm just trying to explain. So I'm just giving you an example. You know, when I think of demonic spirits, I think of it like cockroaches and rats. Okay, I'm just giving you an example, okay. I think of it as cockroaches and rats that try to come into our homes. Now, when cockroaches, you see cockroaches, creeping in your kitchen and your, you know, uh, in your cabinets, in your wardrobes, on the floor. Or when you see a rat, what will you do? Huh? You try to kill it. You'll not say, let it be. You know, they're creatures. We need to love them. <laughs> you know, let them keep coming. What will you do? You'll decide to do something, right? Hey, there's, there's so much of cockroaches. You call the pest control or you'll get a rat trap to catch the rat. Or you'll call the pest control and you'll, you know, uh, uh, put medicine all around in those, uh, you know, everywhere in those um, main connections that you have. Everything will be open. You'll spray it everywhere. You'll spray it all in the kitchen cabinets, everything. Yes, you'll get rid of them, right? Or you can even use your uh, footwear, your, uh, your uh, the brooms and you would kill it, okay? Now, you decided to take authority to clean your house, right okay as long as you tolerate it they'll be happy to infest your home they'll be very happy they'll reproduce fast and they'll be more than happy you'll have a nice farm there in your home but you know when you take authority and do something about it and say hey i'm not going to tolerate this I have to do something about it okay you take action that is how it is with demonic spirits right god has given us the dominion okay the king of the universe has released his authority into your lives and the demons have no right to infest your life infest your world infest your family infest your uh, uh, locality your community your state your nation okay they have no authority to infest your world as long as you are tolerating it so if there is so much of rape that is happening in our nation is because as a church, we are being tolerating it. Just imagine as a church, all of us come together and decree and declare. I'm sure God will break those powers, right? I sometimes also, uh, you know, I also pray God, 
you know, just for you, uh, you know, there's, there's so much of pornography that's available on the internet. And pornography is actually, um, you know, um, blinding the eyes and it is corrupting the minds of people. And that is why they're going to such extents. And that is why the rape cases have increased uh, so much. Okay. And even alcohol. So I say, God, you know, for you, there's, it's nothing. You can just, you know, you don't even have to click a button. You just have to, you know, you can just do, you can just erase everything, every, erase every pornographic material that is there in every systems, in every hardware. Just, just remove it, God. So that is a kind of prayer that we pray and we, we break against, come against all the demonic forces, the spirits that are working against this. So God is going to hold us accountable, right? And we need to do something. We need to arise and do something and take authority because God has given us the authority. And it's sad that as a, as, as a church, as a people of God, as people belonging to the kingdom of God, that we don't know that we have that authority. Tell your neighbor you have the authority. Use it. You have the authority from the spiritual realm. Use it. So exercise your God-given authority in the world, in your sphere of influence, in the sphere of your activity, in bringing the kingdom of God here on earth. And the, who is backing you up? The king of glory, right? He's the king of glory. He's the king of power. And he is the one who is backing you up. Amen? Yes, what more do you need, right? So we look at, um, uh, you know, um, other places in the Bible where we see um, where Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. In his final years on the earth, when Jesus, uh, sorry, the final days on his earth, not years, final days on his earth, when Jesus was ascending back to heaven, he knew he had only 40 days left with his disciples. And he needed to tell them some most important Things. So one of the most important things he told them during his last 40 days here on earth after his resurrection. What does he say? Look at Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Can somebody please read Acts chapter 1 verse 3 please? It's in your books page number 28. Can somebody quickly read? Online students, you can feel free to unmute and speak, uh, read. Okay. <laughs> to whom he also presented himself al alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deepu. So here, what was Jesus teaching them about? He was giving them proofs that he has resurrected. And what is he talking about? Things pertaining to the kingdom of kingdom. God. God. Not things pertaining to the, yes. Not things pertaining to the church. Not things pertaining to how you can do the bring, uh, bring in a supernatural. How you need to establish the church. About missions, evangelism. He's talking here about the kingdom of God. See, so he's continuing to emphasize on the kingdom of God, which means the kingdom of God is so is so important for Jesus, right? Now, even after Jesus went up to heaven, who continues the work here? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, yes, but who continued the ministry work? The disciples. The apostles. The, apostles, the disciples, thank you, the early believers, okay, of the, the church. So we see that... Um, uh, we look at a few examples. Philip, okay. Uh, Philip, who was just a, a believer. We also see the apostles. We see all the believers in the early church. They focused on teaching and demonstrating the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, Philip was someone who served in the church, but he went up. When he went out, sorry, when he went out, he ended up preaching what he had been taught, what the apostles had taught him. And what did he teach about? The kingdom of God. Look at what it says in Acts chapter 8, verse 12. In Acts chapter 8, uh, where does Philip go? We studied yesterday in Christian missions. 
In Acts chapter 8, where does Philip go? Which place? <laughs> where does Philip go? Look at Acts chapter 8. Samaria. Yes, thank you, Komal. He went to Samaria and he did a powerful work in Samaria. Wakey, wakey, everyone. It's morning. Okay. So he goes to Samaria and uh, he preaches the gospel there. Look at what it says in Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Can somebody read that, please? But uh, Can I read, sister? Yes, please. Acts Keep 8, the mic, 12. Please. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Amen. So what did P uh, Philip preach in Samaria? The kingdom of God, right? He preached about the kingdom of God. Look at what um, uh, Acts chapter 14. What did we study about Acts chapter 13 and 14? Who did we? Paul's? Which one? Second missionary journey or third one? First missionary journey, Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 14. So uh, look at what it says in Acts chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. Can somebody read that, please? Acts chapter 14, verse 21, 22. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So here we see that Paul and Barnabas uh, travel to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, and then they go to Derby, right? And after they go to Derby, they go back from Derby, they go back to Iconium, uh, Lystra, and Antioch in Pisidia, okay? So we see that in spite of being persecuted in Lystra, Okay, what uh, and beaten up and left for dead, but he still goes back. And what do they go back and do? What did they? Why did they go back? To preach the kingdom of God. Yes, to strengthen the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue the faith, and saying that we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. So Paul is saying, "Hey, see, I was persecuted. I was beaten up. I was left for dead." We will go through persecutions. We will go through tribulations. But, you know, as people who are part of the kingdom of God, we need to endure all of this and we need to continue strong in the faith. Okay. Look at what Paul say, uh, says uh, to the elders, um, or, or sorry, to, in, uh, to the people at Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, verse 8. Paul is at Ephesus and look at what he's um, teaching in the city of Ephesus. Can somebody please read Acts 19.8, please? Oh, you have to use the mic. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Amen. So we see that Paul uh, goes to Ephesus. As soon as he goes to Ephesus, when he goes to any new city, where does he go first? synagogue and he preaches to the Jews for three months he's preaching and teaching them okay and he's reasoning them reasoning with them uh, concerning what the kingdom of God not about the Jewish laws the Jewish traditions the Torah but he's teaching them concerning the things of the kingdom okay and then we read in Acts chapter 20 when Paul you know how long did Paul stay in Ephesus anyone knows he stays there for a good three years. It's a good solid work that he does in, uh, yes, thank you, Lucy. He stays there for a good three years. For three months, he teaches in the synagogues. And when the Jews persecute him, then he leaves and he goes to the, uh, the hall of Tyrannus, or Tyrannus Hall. And then he's teaching there for, and he spends a good three months in Ephesus. Okay. But we read in Acts chapter 20 that Paul calls the leaders of the churches in Ephesus and he meets them in Miletus. Okay. In a place called Miletus. He calls all the uh, leaders of the church at Ephesus. He tells them to come there and meets them. He wants to visit, uh, he wants to meet them 
because he's going to Jerusalem and, uh, you know, during this meeting with them, he delivers a very uh, heartfelt uh, farewell speech to them, knowing that he will never see them again, because he knows that once he goes to Jerusalem, he will be imprisoned and we know that he was sent to Caesarea and from Caesarea he was sent to Rome. Okay, So in this context, in Acts chapter 20, verse 25, Paul's uh, testimony to the elders from Ephesus, you know, let's read what he says. Can somebody read Acts 20, 25? Somebody else can, can pass the mic around and then yeah, others can read as well. Acts 20, 25. And in yeah, and indeed ahead. now I know that you all, among whom I have gone gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Yes. So Paul's testimony to the elders from Ephesus indicates that he emphasized the preaching of what? The kingdom of God in his ministry. He says that I have preached of the kingdom of God in my ministry okay and even when paul's last days his final assignment okay uh, when he was in under house arrest what does he do when he reaches rome you know he is supposed to be brought before caesar because he's appealed to caesar and he's waiting for trial he is under house arrest house arrest allows him to meet with other people uh, he continued to preach and teach about the kingdom of god how do we know that Look at uh, Acts chapter 28, which talks about this period of his life. Acts 28, 23, 31. Can somebody read that, please? Acts chapter 28, 23, and 21. 31. Th 31. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lo lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. So what was Paul doing even in when he was in Roman imprisonment? He continues to preach with boldness and confidence about the kingdom of God and also teaches them from the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. Verse 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbid, forbid, forbidding him. Him. So, so he's preaching about what? The kingdom of God, right? So we see that, you know, uh, even the early apostles, you know, the believers like Philip, um, we see uh, Paul himself, you know, wherever they went, they continued preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God. So what are we trying to say? The early church was also only preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God. That means the emphasis that is there and the importance about the kingdom of God, which is something that we also need to give emphasis to and something that we need to also preach and teach. Okay. Now, um, Paul saw himself and his ministry team as workers of the kingdom of God. So whatever they did in ministry was for the kingdom. Look at what. Uh, he says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 11. Colossians Je chapter 4, verse 11. And Jesus, who is called Justice, there are many, they are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Yes, so Paul is saying that uh, Paul sees himself and his ministry team as workers of the kingdom of God. So he's talking here about a man called Justice, or even other name is Jesus. Okay, he says, who are part of uh, fellow workers with me for the kingdom of God. Okay. Similarly, look at uh, John, the beloved disciple of Jesus. He saw himself and others with him as companions suffering for the sake of the kingdom. Uh, can someone please read Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, please? I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the early church, we see that thought about the kingdom. Here also, uh, the beloved disciple of Jesus, when he was 
No, on Patmos he says, "Both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the king and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called." Patmos. Okay, so we see that the early church thought about the kingdom. In our present time, you know, the church, we also need to be preaching about the gospel or the good news of the kingdom of God. Okay, the same good news that Jesus preached, that you know what he said in Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen. He says, "And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to." All nations, and then the end will come. Okay, so what will what gospel will be preached? The gospel of the kingdom. Now, when we think about gospel, what comes to our mind? Good news of what? Jesus, or good news of salvation? Yes, we think gospel is just good news of salvation. Okay, but Paul is writing to the church at Rome in Rome in Romans chapter one. He says, "I want to preach the fullness of the gospel." That means he's saying, "What is the fullness of the gospel? Not just about salvation, okay, but also about the person and work of Jesus Christ, and also about the King and His kingdom." So in um, in Romans chapter one, I think it's verse. Uh, I think it's verse sixteen or seventeen. Paul says, "I want." Uh, he's eager. He's uh, he's expressing his heart, and he says, "You know, I'm eagerly looking forward. It's my desire to come to Rome." And he says, "I want to preach the gospel to you." Now we can ask the question: Hey, the church at Rome was already very established, okay? And Paul already writes in Romans chapter one that you know your your the faith. Of the church at Rome has been spoken all over because they were severely persecuted, but the church at Rome had strong faith. So, why is Paul telling the church, "Hey, I want to come and preach the gospel to you," when they already knew the gospel, right? They're already saved. They're part of a church. Their faith is spoken of throughout because, in spite of the persecution, they're strong in their faith. So, what is Paul trying to say when he says, "Hey, I want to come and preach the gospel to you"? Gospel is not just about salvation. Gospel is not just the good news that hey, you be saved and you go to heaven. Yes, he wants to preach to them about the King and His kingdom. Who this King is, the person and work of Jesus Christ, and what is His kingdom of God, and what it entails, and what we need to do. Just like you are studying about the kingdom of God, they, he is also teaching them about the kingdom of God. All of you with me? So it's important. You can even take this book and start preaching to your congregation and let them know your Bible study group or whatever. Let them know what authority they have. So once we know our authority, you know there's nobody who can stop us. Amen. 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 Yes. Okay. So, um, so the for the church in today's world, we need to preach the kingdom of God. We've kind of lost this whole understanding about the kingdom of God. Maybe we have very little understanding about the kingdom, or we don't look at things from the kingdom perspective. Okay, but as we go through these studies, you know, we would and study these two uh, beautiful publications, we will learn the things that Jesus taught concerning the kingdom of God. And I believe that this will change your mindset, your perspective. That our thinking will be aligned to thinking about from the kingdom perspective. Okay, that our thinking and our way of living will become an expression of the king's dominion in our life. Amen. I'll repeat that our thinking and our way of living will become an expression of the king's dominion in our life, and it'll be an expression of the fact that Jesus Christ is ruling in and through us. Amen. Amen. So some of you were praying for your children, teenage children, grandchildren. You know, they're going away from the ways of the Lord. Just declare and decree over their lives. God has given you the authority. Take His word, declare and decree with humility, and speak God's word and see things move because He is the King of His kingdom and He wants all of His fullness to be established or to be manifested, to be realized, to be experienced in His kingdom. Okay. Yes, Sister Gertrude, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Sister, I have a question. 
now in um, goa we are our intercessory group is praying for goa especially for the against the drugs abuse and uh, alcohol and gambling for quite some time but we do not get any answer so what should we think <laughs> yeah thank you so uh, don't say you've not got any answer the thing is you've not seen you've not gone to those uh, uh, you know drug dens or you've not gone to the pubs you don't visit them right you don't see yeah. you've not taken attendance who's coming who's not coming you've not uh, uh, you don't know but you you pray you're declaring and decreeing you need to pray sometimes we know, we need to know what kind of prayers to pray when to give thanksgiving prayer praise and worship when to pray prayers of de declaration and decree when to pray prayers of when have you you have to get into engage in spiritual warfare prayers so you know um god is working god is moving god would be changing lives you don't know he is working all you need to do is just continue to uh, uh, to intercede and to pray and to declare and to uh, decree you know we can't see like in every uh, uh, like in a day everything changes but you know slowly to come to that place and you will see uh, god moving you will hear testimonies also i remember you know um, we um, i want because we this uh, video is going on youtube i'm not going to uh, mention the specific details in uh, in uh, you know during um, um, a season in this in the year um, we pray for certain um, people with uh, you know from different faith um, and um, we pray that you know they're going they go into intense fasting so we pray for them at that time and we pray god you manifest yourself to them and so like you were saying uh, you know uh, that's it. when i pray is anything changing is anything happening so i remember one of them who uh, who came out from that faith um, spoke at one of our uh, meetings in i think at apc and i heard her saying that you know during those times when they were fasting there was this priest of this specific faith you know uh, he was tired because he was ministering and then he went in that small room in the side and he was resting and then he sees a vision of jesus just jesus standing there that was more than enough you know that changed his life he gave up that faith he came into the accepted jesus christ and i was like Oh yeah, the you know I've I've been praying those uh, those days of fasting, and I was wondering whether God is doing anything. Well, He is God; He moves, He works. You know, so continue to pray and believe and trust God, and um, don't give up. Yes, continue to pray till you see you know breakthroughs happen. Yes. Okay, sister. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll uh, move on to uh, a parable that is there. Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. Can somebody please read Matthew chapter 21, 33 to 46? Quickly, please. We just have one minute then. Shall I go ahead, sister? Yes, yes, go ahead. Matthew 21, 33 to 46. Here, another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it dug a wine press in it and built a tower and he leased it to wine dressers and went into a far country now when vintage time drew near he sent his servants to the wine dressers that they might receive its fruits and the wine dressers took his servants bet one killed one and stoned another and he sent other servants more than the first and they did likewise to them then last of all he sent his son to them saying they will respect my son but when the wine dressers saw the son they said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and seize his inheritance so they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him therefore when the owner of the vineyard comes what will he do to those wine dressers they said to him he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other wine dressers and who will render to him the fruits in their seasons jesus said to them have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builder reje rejected has become the chief cornerstone this was the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes therefore i say to you the kingdom of god will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it amen 
One second. Okay. Amen. What? Other and two more brothers and sisters. Other two more other sister. And whoever okay, falls on this, and whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now, when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. We'll uh, explain this after the break.